Good day Grade 12, welcome to your next lesson in Differential Calculus. I've decided that even though Sala showed us how to find your maxima, minima and your critical points on a graph, that in order to bring it all together, we should do a typical exam type question. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're looking at drawing a graph using both factorization and calculus and we're going to be looking at a polynomial. So it says given that f of x is equal to 2x cubed plus 7x squared plus 4x minus 4, draw the graph. Okay, so that's what they want us to do. And they've given us a hint. They've said first they want us to calculate the coordinates of the intercepts with the axes of the graph of f. Okay, they want us to calculate the coordinates of the intercepts with the axis of the graph of f. Okay, so first of all, the easy part is knowing where it cuts the y-axis because this is where the graph cuts the y-axis because at that point, x is naught, so you're going to get naught plus naught plus naught minus 4. So therefore, we know that the graph cuts or the y-intercept is equal to minus 4. Now we need to find out where it cuts the x-axis. And in order to do that, we need to factorize this. We need to find out where this whole thing equals naught. Now, I don't know if you remember, but we have to use a thing called the factor theorem. So what we do is we allow x to be certain numbers. And we substitute in it. We try and find out when the whole of this, f of x, is 0. So let's start letting x equal to 1. So we're going to let x equal 1. Then what do we have? We've got f of 1 is equal to 2 times by 1 cubed plus 7 times by 1 squared plus 4 times by 1 minus 4. Okay, so that becomes 2 plus 7 plus 4 minus 4 and that obviously does not equal 0. So obviously then that is not a factor. Let's try x equal to 2. Okay, so we've got f of 2 is going to be 2 times 2 cubed plus 7 times 2 squared plus 4 times 2 minus 4. That becomes 8 cubed times, or well, 2 cubed is 8 times 2 is 16 plus 7 times 4. 7 times 4 is 28 plus 8 minus 4 and we can see it's become something very positive, it doesn't equal 0. So we can see that x plus 1, x, x equals 1, x equals 2 doesn't work. And with all of these grade 12s you'll find that what happens is they tend to go 1, 2 and then if that doesn't work you can try minus 1 and minus 2. So that's what we're going to try here. So we're going to go f of minus 1. So f of minus 1 is equal to 2 times minus 1 cubed plus 7 times minus 1 squared plus 4 times minus 1 minus 4. Okay, so that becomes minus 8 plus 7, okay, minus 4, minus 4. So that again does not equal 0. Okay, but we can now try f of minus 2. So f of minus 2 is 2 times minus 2 cubed plus 7 times minus 2 squared plus 4 times minus 2 minus 4, which becomes, that becomes minus 2 cubed is minus 8 times by 2 is minus 16 plus 7 times 4, 7 times 4 is 28 and then that becomes minus 8 minus 4 and that equals 0. So yay, that works. And what does that mean? That means therefore that we've got x plus 2. x plus 2 is a factor. Is a factor. Right, so now we know that x plus 2 is a factor. Right, so now what we need to do is find out what the other factors are of this polynomial. So if, I don't know if you remember, but this is how we used to do it with the factor theorem, is now we say, okay, fine, we have got 2x cubed plus 7x squared plus 4x minus 4. And that is equal to x plus 2 
And now remember that there has to be something that we need to multiply this by. So what do we do? We multiply the first into the first. So 2x cubed divided by x is 2x squared, right? Plus 2 into minus 4 is minus 2. And then we've got some kx. We don't know what it is. There's a middle term that gives us our k. So let's see what that is. Now it's going to have to equal the x squared term. Okay, so how do we do that? This times this gives me 4x squared. So we've got 4x squared. Plus this times this gives me my kx squared. And that has to equal 7x squared. Therefore, we can see that k is very obviously 3. Therefore, we've got that so far we've got x plus 2 and then this factorizes into 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. Okay, and now we need to factorize this last thing here. So all we need to do is look at our factors and we need them to, so the factors of your first one are 2 and 1 and your factors of your last one are 1 and 2. 2 times 2 is 4 and 1 times 1 is 1 so we've got 4 minus 1 gives us 3 but that gives me my minus 2 so I've got and then we write it remember we write it across like this so it becomes 2x minus 1 x plus 2 and that's x plus 2 so if we factorize this we have got the factors are x plus 2 2x minus 1 and x plus 2, right? Therefore, we can say that the coordinates are when x equals minus 2 or a half or minus 2. Okay, so that there helps us find the coordinates. So this is where it either cuts or touches the x-axis. Okay, now before we carry on, I'm going to erase this because I need the space. So, right, now they've asked us, we've now found the coordinates of the intercept with the axes of the graph. Now they say, calculate the coordinates of the turning points of the graph. And what have we've learned? We have learned that if we find the first derivative, f dashed of x, and we let it equal zero, we will find the x values we'll find the x values of the turning points. That's what we're going to, and that's, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to find the x values of the turning points and then we'll worry about how we get the values of the y. So when you're seeing the coordinates of the turning points, the first thing we're going to do is derive. So, we're going to, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to find the first derivative of this. So we're going to go f dashed of x is equal to 2 times 3 is 6, that's 6x six squared plus 7 times 2 is 14x plus 4. So do you agree I could actually, now we're going to let this equal naught, right? And then do you agree I could take out a common factor of 2? So now we've got 3x squared plus 7x plus 2 equals naught. And then we can factorize it. So our factors of 3 are just 3 and 1. And our factors of 2 are 1 and 2, or 2 and 1. But 3 times 2 gives me 6, plus 1 gives me 7, so that works. They're both positive, so, and then we just write them across like this, okay? Therefore, our brackets are 3x plus 1, or x plus 2 equals 0. Therefore, our x coordinates, the x values of the turning points are going to be x is equal to minus a third or x equals to minus 2. So now we need to find the y values of this, the y cuts, okay? So luckily for us, we can see that this is the same as that. So we know that this is when y equals naught. We get x equals minus 2. So we know that already that this point is going to be minus 2 zero. If you didn't see that immediately, you could have just substituted this minus 2 into the formula and you would have got zero. Okay, so then you would have found out that the y value of this is zero when x equals minus 2. But now we do need to do this one. So we're going to go f 
of minus a third. And please, grade 12, don't make the mistake. We are trying to find out the value of y, okay, when x equals minus a third, because we're trying to find the turning point. So therefore, we always substitute back into the original. Always substitute back into the original. So we're going to go 2 times minus a third cubed plus 7 times minus a third squared plus 4 times minus a third minus 4 and then we're going to get out our calculators right and we're going to go okay let's go menu and see right so we got 2 times bracket okay negative 0.3 bracket to the power of 3 plus bracket 7 times bracket negative 0.3 bracket squared close bracket plus bracket 4 times negative 0.3 bracket minus 4 and we get a total answer of minus 4.624 minus 4.624 which is going to give us negative equals negative 4.624 and in maths we just round off to the first decimal so it's minus 4.6 so therefore we know that the other turning point is going to be at minus a third and, the, and minus 4.6 and remember we don't like this to be written like this so this is going to be minus 0.3 because we don't like a fraction and a decimal. We need them all to be the same thing. And therefore, minus 4.6. Okay, so now we know the coordinates of the turning points are going to be minus 2 naught. And the other coordinate of the turning point is going to be minus 0, 3 and minus 4, 6. Right, and then I'm going to now again erase so that I have space for everything. Right, now grade 12, we can use the information we have worked out to draw this graph. Okay, now remember what I said to you, you guys should be using pencils and you should be using rulers to draw these lines. I don't want you to draw little rough lines like I've done, but unfortunately in the digital pen and pad you can't do that. Right, so the first thing we know is that it cuts the y-axis at minus 4. So I'm going to give it a more or less minus 1, 2, 3 and 4. So that's minus 4. We also know that it cuts the x-axis at minus 2. So it's x is minus 1, minus 2. And at a half, so that would be 1 and that would be 2. So this would be about a half. Okay, so we know that. Then we know that turning points are at minus 2, 0. So that's a turning point. And the other turning point is at minus 0, 3 and minus 4.6. So actually, I'm going to erase this minus 4 and put it on the other side. Okay, so let's go back to the black and I'm going to put minus 4 here. And the other turning point is going to be minus 0, 3, it's about there, and minus 4.6. So that's a turning point there. Now finally, another way to help us draw this graph is to realize that it is a positive cubic graph, which means it's going to start in the upper right hand corner. Okay, so it's going to start up here. It's going to go through a half. It has to go through minus 4, but then it turns over there and it turns over here. Okay. Right, so that point there is going to be, and I'm just going to draw an arrow because it's too small, is going to be minus 0, 3 and minus 4.6. Okay, 4.6. And that point there is obviously minus 2, 0. And this point here, I've already written the half, but let's write it properly, a half. 0 and just to make our graph look beautiful x and y axes now remember grade 12s again ideally your graph should look beautiful and round like that okay not so pointed but unfortunately again it's very difficult to do perfectly on a digital pen and pad with a digital pen and pad so obviously my graph isn't as beautiful but you guys are using pencils and razors so that's kind of the shape you should be looking at and here's a little hint if you have it 
touching or cutting the x-axis twice in the same place, then you should know that it's touching it. It's just touching the x-axis at that point there, which is minus 2. Right, okay. Right, grade 12, so that is just an example of how you would do a typical exam question and use both calculus and factor, the factor theorem to draw a polynomial graph. Please make sure you can do this and then do all the examples in the turn system. Have a great day.